everyone, and welcome to the Model High Scale Modeler channel. My name is Brandon. In this video, we're going to go through all of the hauls that I've gotten the last couple of months from all kits, aftermarket stuff, decals, um, some good mail calls I've gotten from a few people here recently, and some other stuff that I've grabbed from people locally and also on Facebook uh, groups as well. Let's take a deep dive in everything I got, and let's see how well I did. Alright, let's start looking at the model kits I've gotten in the last few months as one big stash update from multiple people in multiple places I've gotten it from. Uh, this is the Street Burner 70 Dodge Challenger TA 2-in-1. I've seen this kit built a few times. Um, definitely a kit that I liked a lot. Seeing it built on a few of the channels here locally on YouTube and also a lot of guys on a few of the Facebook groups uh, sharing their builds as well. Love the matte black finish on here and the stripes. Uh, the black uh, um, tail back here as well is pretty cool. Uh, side exhaust right before the rear tires is also really cool. Um, something I like is a Street Burner series, which I thought was pretty cool. I got this at Michael's on clearance for $11.99 a piece. I bought two of them as I wanted to do one in the, the Go Mango orange for Dodge and then the Sublime Green from Dodge as well, both with a matte hood. So I felt this was something cool to get, especially for under 30 bucks with tax for two kits. Couldn't pass it up at Michael's on clearance. Uh, I got this just last week, so if you guys have a Michael's near you, definitely go and check it out. Uh, looks like their clearance sections have moved to different places of the store, so it's not actually clearance there on the shelves with mall kits. These mall kits will be somewhere else in a corner somewhere, uh, just saying clearance next to them. So. Definitely check it out and run that tag at Michael's on all the kits. See if any are clearance that they may have missed. I have found that too, where some have been missed at Michael's that run clearance, and they were sitting with regular kits and was unaware. Next thing is I got was the Jimmy Flintstone 41 pickup. Um, I wrote Dragon Tub because I want to do that for this kit, even though it's resin. Um, it is not tubbed. It is just a normal kit, but it does have some pretty cool stuff to it. So opening it up here. One of the things I liked that Jimmy did was the the wood texture to this. Um, the body is separate. It's a little hard to take off here because it has a tight fit. Uh, the hood comes off as well, which is pretty uh, nicely casted. Um, I definitely like the uh, the fat fenders on on the pickups in the 40s and 30s, as well as the Ford Chevys and the uh, Willys as well. So definitely like this. Definitely a different look. Um, for this uh, for this truck compared to the typical 41s that you have. I did recently buy a 41 uh, Ravel Chevy pickup that came with that window visor that we saw that came out probably in 2015 or 2016 and uh, it'll be a donor for this one so definitely be a cool truck to build. Um, overall a nice resin cast. I don't see any bubbles or any defects on this uh, resin cast as well. I did buy this off of eBay and I believe this was directly from Jimmy um, as it was Jimmy Flintstone Studios on eBay that was selling this. So um, I don't know if Jimmy watches any of this stuff. Uh, thanks for making some great stuff as I definitely do appreciate the resin castings that he does. And um, definitely with the 72 uh, Chevy El Camille I built uh, a few years back that I have. It was one of the first videos on YouTube that I need to do a oh, uh, rehaul over. Um, definitely appreciated that resin kit from him. I also did grab a 49 Ford chopped top um, Jimmy Flintstone kit as well. I have two 49 uh, AMT kits. And I just got one of these. I wanted to do one kit um, with the actual body and then one with a chopped top. Um, different colors obviously. Uh, this kit overall is um, definitely a nice a nice detail as well. You got the, you got the side um, stripes here which is pretty cool for the chrome. You definitely have a nice chopped top look back is slanted well. Um, the lines overall are nice. Definitely don't see a lot of issues with putting this in. Um, hoping there's not an not issue with the hood mitting in here. Maybe probably having to add some styrene to it um, to make sure the hood actually fits the width of this as sometimes the molds do get wider over the age with those molds themselves. Got a little something here from Jimmy. 
but in the inside looks uh, good overall. Definitely need a little bit of sanding if you want the top to be seen or anything. Uh, but with this kit, definitely uh, interest for me to build this one. Probably have this one as like a, a flat black or something. Maybe something like what Luca over at Luca C's did for his uh, flat black. I believe it was a 49 Ford with the mud and stuff on the side. But I like that flat black look. But maybe might um, make it more of like a a street drag. You know, the kids back in the day drove around um, in the 50s and 60s when they did the the events around the the city and stuff, just driving all day like um, like American Graffiti and stuff. So that'd be kind of cool to have something like that uh, built for this with a chop top. Next thing I got was if you all didn't haven't seen, I have a build series and a build video on a Mercedes AMG GT3 that I did with a castrol livery that was uh, fantasy and so with that um seeing james seeing john uh pg luca everyone from mall car mafia there um and definitely everyone appreciating the build that i did and having a lot of questions for me um i wasn't aware they actually had a hobby design detail set and john put me on to um a place that had these in stock which i greatly appreciate uh these were 30 bucks a piece i got three of them from a guy in australia and I have three more kits of these I want to build, um, one with the Leon um, livery and then two other just custom liveries I'll find in the future, maybe from SKD Cows Racing 43 or any of the guys on Facebook that do uh, decals as well. But this is really cool for the price. You get a lot of photo etch and a lot of parts for both interior and exterior. You get an antenna you can use that's metal, a whole bunch of little knobs and stuff here for the buttons controls inside um rivets that kind of thing these all have a number associated so you know which one they go to in the instruction manual just super super tiny details here that definitely make a difference in your build if you're doing competition or anything like that so i'm definitely happy to find these available um here's the instruction manual it tells you all that comes with and what number they are and how to build out everything um grill placements knobs buttons everything you can think of uh, brass seat belts the uh the protector the cockpit um net for the netting uh building a true 3d uh fan and everything here for radiator which is really cool and it's definitely a from what i've heard it's a bit of a pain but definitely looks good once it's done and then even um the actual photo etch for the uh for the wing itself that would that would mount onto the body from the wing so definitely a really um something really cool to have these definitely do make the uh the kit stand out for sure which i'm pretty happy to see and then here are the is a photo etch uh, one two three four five six seven pieces of photo etch here all with stuff in it so uh excited to see brass stainless steel um, it'll be cool to get this working on and get this to show higher detail quality for all my upcoming builds. So I'm definitely super excited for this guy to be used. And getting three from Australia for 110 ships. The currency rate right now is great for us in the States um, based upon the Australian dollar. So um, if you can find these or if you're into these type of uh, GT3 cars, GT4, IMSA, and you can find these, they're definitely worth it from what I've seen um, based upon my buddy John's build. And other people I've seen um, do their builds with these uh, photo etch sets on them. It's really cool to have. Next, um, just a disclaimer. I do like NASCAR. Um, I I grew up in the 90s. I'm more of a 90s NASCAR fan. Um, and obviously cartoons back in the 90s, this is something I was looking for. I wanted to do a fancy livery on something in the future. It won't be NASCAR, obviously these are NASCAR decals, but something different for maybe an IMSO or a GT3, GT4, something else that'll just be cool to have. And um, I'll probably do something with the wheel wells cut out in some of these, but it'll be cool just to have a Cartoon Network uh, decal sheet that I can use for a build in the future. Um, this sheet does come with an actual Ravel NASCAR kit, number 29, um, Cartoon Network one. That kit's going for 30, 40, 50 bucks typically. And from seeing the older NASCAR decals that were in the 90s, definitely a lot of yellowing, a lot of drying. And with Flix decals, even though these are from 1998, 
Um, no yelling whatsoever. I, I, I don't know what Slicks did with their decals, but I haven't seen a decal sheet yet that I've bought from Slicks or from someone on eBay where I got this one from from eBay. Uh, have any yellowing that's significant by any means. So whatever Slicks did with their decal uh, sheets, definitely props to them. I don't believe they make NASCAR sheets anymore. I wish they still did or could reproduce some of these older ones uh, that I would definitely like to have a few duplicates of just because of the cool stuff that comes in here. Uh, the gauges, um, the actual Atom, those type of things are pretty cool and just have different liveries or different ways to do this. Uh, I know Ravel had a few of the Scooby-Doo ones that were different liveries and I definitely want to find those and do some uh, Scooby-Doo fantasy liveries on some IMSA cars too. Uh, so that's pretty cool to see and get this for a good deal. Next I have this YHP Nissan RE9C. This is a Hasegawa kit. I got this at Kami's Fest. I have about three or four videos out there from Kami's Fest about uh, last November, I believe is when it was. And there was a vendor table and this I showed in the vendor table. And what's funny is the guy had it for 25 and also for 10. And I said, you know, I'll grab this kit for 25. And he said, no, let's give it to you for 10, which I was, I couldn't say no to 10 for sure. Uh, this kit, I didn't notice when I bought it as I was looking through everything and saw, you know, some parts were on sprue, some parts were in pieces, but everything is here. Uh, decals are definitely shot, so I'll have to find some new decals for it. But the one thing that I thought was really cool that I found with this kit is that it came with Studio 27 Photo Etch. Um, these right here are going for 30 40 50 bucks easily because they're getting harder to find for these older kits I've been seeing. Um, so anything Studio 27 coming into the States definitely is pretty expensive um, on eBay and even finding it at vendor tables, at contests, or um, swap meets. So with this, pretty much getting this whole entire kit and this in there for 10 bucks, like this right here is, is tenfold on just the price of this for 10 bucks, you know? So uh, this was definitely a cool kit that I saw and definitely from building that GT, uh, G the AMG GT3, definitely saw I wanted to get some more of these racing uh, kits and stuff. And this was a pretty cool for 124th scale uh, being the Hasegawa. Um, so definitely something cool to see how they have the back end like this too. Next kit I got is a Subaru Debrooks STI. Um, this is the right-handed driving, so it's not where you can get two, it's just right-handed only. Um, I got this as I definitely love this Hawkeye look for this. I'm not a fan of the bug eye, the kit, the, um, the body from 2000 to 2004, but I love this 2005, uh, 2006 body. Um, definitely the BBS wheels coming standard on these STIs. And just the sound, the rumbling of an STI, um, I definitely enjoy and always been a fan of that wing in the back. Uh, with this kit, I did buy something extra for it, and I'll go more in depth in this kit in a kit review. Along with all the kits I have here, I'll do kit reviews on as well. As you've seen in the past, that are super extensive and bring out every single thing so you can see if it's worth your price to pay that you're seeing. But I also got these in the crazy modeler is the actual photo etch for this car. So um, I found it on eBay a, a year, about a, maybe three, four months ago, a little bit after I bought this kit. And they were hard to find. They were like 10 bucks, and they don't, I don't see them any, anywhere um, for sale anywhere else. So I was happy I got one set on here that I could get from China. Um, but overall, this kit's going to be pretty cool to build. Um, I will build this in the Alpine White. I do love that color, and I also have that from uh, scale finishes that I have. And then I'll probably um, definitely keep the gold or maybe go for black on this. But that will be in a future build. Um, just some thoughts for now, but definitely do a kit review on this and all our kits. I show today um, in the future for sure. Next kit I got is the BMW M3 E30 GR8 91 Autotech. Uh, this is really cool. This is a two-in-one Makai Guai Racing. Um, something uh, definitely a kit that I thought was really cool. I love just the look of these 90s uh, M3 E30s. Um, definitely being a new new kit, my first new new kit that I'll have. So definitely uh, cool to see. The one thing that I did when I bought this is I went to Upscale Hobbies and I grabbed an aftermarket set of these decals for it, um, that are SK decals. 
Uh, our my buddy John and everyone in Arizona definitely was talking about SK decals, racing 43. All these guys that do aftermarket decals, and I fell in love with this livery right here, uh, Mr. Juicy, and just the way it has the decals for the colors. You don't have to actually paint them on and try to find something that's replicating it. You can just use the decals and it gives those colors for you. I thought this was pretty cool to have. Uh, definitely overall compared to the basic um, auto tech decals that are pretty basic. Um, I'll probably maybe use this number combination 35 right here as we have 35 here as well. But we'll see. But this was definitely something I just couldn't pass up seeing for a price uh, that this kit was. And just getting this kit in general because it, it's just pretty cool and badass. Another kit that I got from Kami's Fest is this Opal Calibra V, uh, V6 DTM. Um, I never seen this kit before and seeing Old Spice and just the box art for it was just cool. Seeing how it was. Uh, never heard of UT models. Looked them up and they have a plethora of models that are pretty cool. Um, didn't really look at reviews or anything on seeing if there's any issues with these kits and how well they're built or if they're not. Um, definitely get on YouTube and see if there's any kit reviews for it that I can look at and see um, any issues they have that they built. But overall, this kit's pretty cool. Definitely some um, some sunning right here. So I uh, was kind of definitely curious about the decals when I opened this kit up. And when I opened this up, it was cool just because it tells you all the colors here. Um, the colors here for Tamiya, uh, Patone color, Tester's color, and Ravel color. So never heard of Patone, but Tamiya, Tester's, and Ravel definitely give you some color combinations here that they want you to use based upon what each color these would be. So... Definitely something really cool. And here in the instructions, the decals um, are actually in very good condition. I was really surprised how good a condition these were, so I was stoked to see these uh, in overall great condition. So hopefully they don't yellow on me before I start to build this car, but definitely stoked to see this car um, get built. And the body, just the way it looks, the wide body kit and stuff, it just looks mean. So. It'll be a cool opal to build for sure. Uh, next up, I got this Corvette C6R Le Mans Winter 2006. This is the Revell of Germany version, or boxer I should say. There is the just the big regular Revell jersey, Revell, sorry. There's just the regular Ravel box that has the car actually pointing the opposite direction. And I've seen plenty of guys uh, build that on YouTube and the decals look great. The biggest thing that I've seen with Ravel Germany decals with the the recent uh, Le Mans 40, um, 4 GT that they released is the decal sheet is a little bit longer sometimes or it has different things on it. Maybe more, um, more sponsors, more more whatever and so it's always cool to see what will come in this one this one is still sealed uh, but i will do a uh, complete uh, kit review on this one and for everyone to see if there's a difference in this kit versus the one that came from uh, Ravel usa and if the decals are different i'm always curious to see the decals being different in these kits and what they provide if they do this is a kit i've been looking for since i left Arizona with having um, spending multiple days with BG over at BG's model workshop and talking to him and look going through all of his builds in depth and just understanding it from all the videos that I saw on his YouTube channel in the past and seeing them in person this one definitely caught my eye on how he built it and just his overall experience with building it and how it was and it definitely made me want to find one so I bought a uh, the new release from Ravel 30 model a and I have a buddy here, Roy, in Colorado who likes to trade um, sealed kits for sealed kits. So I traded that Model A for this sealed kit right here. And this kit I'm definitely excited to do an unboxing of to see what all comes in it for um, from opening it directly um, and seeing what comes with it. It has, has, has plaid down here, which looks pretty cool. Um, I just love the aerodynamics of the car. The, what is that, V2? No, it's like a V8. It looks like um, maybe it's a V10. I can't can't tell exactly, but uh, it looks pretty cool. And just the the wheels and the tires and the uh, the grill and stuff. It's just 
it looks badass so if you haven't seen it go on bg's bg model workshops youtube uh, channel it'll be in his older videos but he'll show this kit and it's definitely a cool kit to see uh him build it and what and his infant and his background on it in his videos but also it's even cooler to see it in person and see you know how great it is one thing that i've noticed is when you watch them on youtube build it's great but when you see it in person you definitely see it in a different light um it's better than youtube which is really cool so definitely you know seeing it in person definitely made me want to get this kit so i'm happy to be able to do a trade with roy here in colorado and get this kit that i was looking for um, I reached out to Dragon Speed Shop over on YouTube. He no longer does YouTube videos, but uh, Tyler's a great guy over there. And I wanted to reach out to him. This is his shop card, by the way. Uh, I want to reach out to him because I saw some videos and I watched some of his old videos where he was doing uh, custom chassis work, building a chassis from the or frame from the from the ground up. And he was using some parts that were really cool that he seemed like he made that um, helped align the chassis up really well. And so with him, I actually was able to um, grab some of these from him. And these are really cool. These help when you have a, when you need a, a square to actually, when you actually have something you need to square up for a chassis, you have big ones here to keep all four corners. Say if you have a building a square chassis, all four corners will be aligned when you glue it. And also smaller ones as well. So I definitely want to give props to Tyler as this was definitely cool to get from him. Um, I got this probably four or five, six months ago. I think it was around Christmas time and I haven't actually done a, a uh, thank you to him, but this is my thank you to him. I uh, hope he's watching this. Uh, but these definitely help keep a lot of stuff aligned from seeing what he does. And I'm excited to start doing some uh, scratch building in frames and whatnot in the future. I have some ideas for tubbing, um, C notches, and so, some um, some bagged chassis kits for trucks. So excited to use these and start uh, using these for squaring up and making sure everything is nice and tight and straight for when I'm building so nothing is off as expected so uh, again if you haven't uh, subscribed to Dragon Speed Shop definitely do even though he's no longer doing YouTube videos all of his videos are still on there they're all still current and useful information especially when he does his in-depth builds um, if you're if you're interested in scale finishes paints um, he does a build thoroughly with it with scale finishes as did I with my GT3 uh, caster livery from the AMG so uh, if you haven't subscribed definitely subscribe to him um, all of his videos are still cool to watch, and I watch them just to get information on some building tips all the time. All right, so I have a buddy here locally in Colorado. His name is Larry. He is an administrator and helps oversee a Facebook group called Scale Rods and Mods. Scale Rods and Mods is a Facebook group that you can do, that people can sell directly model kits on there, show your builds. They have group build-offs. Um, one of the recent videos I had was a recent group build off that you can look in my prior playlist that you can find a few months back. And they also have live auctions where sellers actually sell their stuff live auction. He's an auctioneer on there. And so with him, I do a lot of uh, trading, a lot of uh, buying and even selling to him. So we do all three things. He's definitely a close friend that I would call definitely a close friend and definitely um, really cool to talk to. And just he knows a lot about kits which is awesome. And if you don't have the kit, he definitely can find it for you. So I was looking for this kit for a while. Um, this Williams Renault FW19. I remember watching this in 1997, uh, when the Formula One World Championship, and this was a cool one to watch as a kid. So I wanted to find this. Being a Ravel monogram, I definitely felt maybe there might be some issues with it. Maybe there aren't. But overall, I wanted to grab it. Um, it's a skill level three, but just the kit itself is just cool to have so uh definitely thanks larry for uh letting me grab this for you from a good price that i got um so this is the first one of many that i have here that i got from larry so that's the first one the next one i grabbed from larry is a 60 chevy uh chevy street machine this is factory sealed um love this truck in the 60 chevys uh, definitely cool to have a street machine that's already kind of lowered, but I also want to bag it and do some other things to it. Maybe make it a street rod and not bag it, I'm not sure, but uh, skill level 2, it has these flame uh, wheels to it and everything else. Uh, it's got a straight inline 6, it's pretty cool. Uh, just a kit that I couldn't uh, get away from for the price that he was giving it out to me in his auction. So I was pretty stoked to win that in his auction and get that one moving. 
Um, one I did pick up from him in a trade just this past week was his Hot Rod Chevy Street pickup. Uh, I will be doing an in-depth kit review on this. Um, this pickup right here is a pickup that I, not this exact one here in this paint scheme, but just this body style. Uh, my great-grandfather, my grandfather, and my uncle um, had this truck. It was a light blue one. I think it was a, a Cheyenne, maybe, but it it had this body style, and it was just a cool truck, even though it was 4x4. Um, but this one definitely brings me back to that memory. The only thing with this kit that I actually am not fond of are the tires. The tires are two-piece hard plastic. It's not like just the tires you get where it's a single tire and you just put your wheel in and you're good to go. No, they had to make it a two-piece tire. So I'll definitely be getting some different tires for this one. Um, definitely keeping the wheels, though. Uh, love the 350 V8 engine with the tuned port injection system in it, which is pretty cool here. Definitely love openness in the bay to do a lot more customization, a lot more aftermarket stuff to it. So definitely see that. I'll be doing that. Um, and the sunroof. So with this, I'm actually going to probably um, cut the actual clear off of this as it all comes in one piece with the front and rear window glass. And actually um, take a resin uh, piece maybe from... Um, Colt 3D where I print my stuff and it's actually a rag top um, opening. I'll probably do that which would be pretty cool um, to see that. Love the side exhaust on this, on it but overall this kit I mean I, I couldn't pass it up for what I for uh, for a trade so definitely again thanks Larry for this one. Uh, definitely a holy definitely a grail for me for some extent. Now the rest of the ones that I have are all going to be uh, racing to an extent. Um, I'm big into racing right now so I had to get a Rain-X Camaro um, this kind of reminds me of like the IROC racing back in the day, not NASCAR, but like the IROC or like the IMSA or the Trans Am series. There you go, Trans Am series. So this was cool. Um, just a Chevy Camaro like this with Rain-X. Uh, just a cool overall kit. Um, so I had to get this one and the other two that I'll show here in a few minutes um, to bring out my collection from the 1993 SCCA uh, Trans Am team. So definitely what I had to get here. And then moving on to that one, I also got this Sunoco number three Ron Fellow Sunoco Camaro. Another Trans Am one as well from uh, Chevy. This helps uh, just make my collection even stronger for these type of cars. Uh, definitely something I want to build as well. So even though it's in my collection, it is meant to be built. So uh, something cool that I had to um, grab. And then the final one of that is the Hot Wheels Camaro uh, Trans Am again Camaro. Um, I'm looking on scale mates, these are all pretty much the same car besides the the decal sheet, uh, the livery, and then I think there's maybe the Ranex has a few extra additional parts in it. Um, but overall, the kit's the exact same thing besides just a different livery. So this one is just the the Hot Wheels Camaro. There is one that comes with a 64, a 164th die cast and an actual base for this to go on. So that's my next one I'm looking for is one with the actual base and that die cast just to have that in my collection. Uh, but overall, this is a cool kit as well. So, couldn't pass this one up for 25 bucks. Next one is the 7-Eleven uh, GTP. Um, this one's a monogram. Definitely, again, IMSA racing these type of cars as an IMSA Mustang right here. Uh, had to get it for 7-Eleven. Uh, I don't see this much anymore. I see a 7-11 for the logos at 7-Eleven and stuff. I don't see it written out, so this definitely brings you back to the 90s. When I go there and get a Slurpee and play um, arcade games in the back, um, which was pretty cool, Sonic or um, Street Fighter, those old games or Rust or um, uh, the WWF game back in the day was always back there in the corner. Or when they had Kino up on a TV and you could do Kino as a kid, you remember watching that coming through and stuff. So it was always cool at times at 7-Eleven back in the 90s. So just had to get this kit for um, for this one. Definitely a cool one to see. Leaving the racing scene for a few seconds, I did get this 37 Ford Coupe from Larry as well. Uh, this one I did uh, I did trade for. Uh, I'm just a huge sucker, again, like with the 41 uh, Flintstone Chevy pickup that I did the resin. I'm just a huge sucker for fat thinner. So the Willys, uh, these 37s, the, the 40 Fords, 30 Fords, whatever they are that have the fat thinners, even the trucks, I'm just a sucker for because that swooping just, man, that's... It's cool, but also when you're airbrushing something like this, you use that swooping, that X swooping effect to get everything in here, nook and cranny when you're painting. It's just awesome to see these just change the color you want it to be even when clearing. So 
um, these are definitely this is definitely a cool kit to uh, to grab for sure. So. Moving on, I got the Emza Motorsport Mustang. Uh, this one's a really cool kit as well to go with my collection of the Mustangs that are Emza. So, how to get this one? Uh, the engine just looks awesome that comes in here. Um, the overall detail, the wide body kit, the wing, I mean, the, the low stance for it, like, just this kit just can't be, you know, I had to get it. Um, obviously, it's not made anymore. I wish they would repop these, but. Probably not like they don't with a lot of NASCARs and a lot of stuff because of rights, but um, these are still readily easy, available to be found for 20, 30, 40 bucks, but definitely still um, a kit I had to grab. To go along with the IMSA Mustang, I had to get the number one Whistler Mustang as well. Um, this kit's just cool. It's molded in red. Uh, it has some different um, side bars, the roll cage, compared to the other kits. Uh, I believe this one, the actual back doesn't open but the uh, Motocraft one does, so that's pretty cool. Maybe this one does as well, I'm not sure. That uh, is a 1991 uh, copy written, but um, overall these kits are just cool because they already have the front that comes off separately, so when you put it on there you can have the body on the car during your competition when you're showing out a contest and have this off to show everything in here. And it looks cool for representation, especially on a diorama or whatnot, so just had to get this one, it was pretty cool to get. Alright, so I had to get the Miller Mustang as well. This is the Emza Racer. This one unfortunately does not have the decals, which for some reason with NASCAR, Coors, Miller, any beer ones, it's hard to find open kits that actually have the decals in it. So I'll still be on the lookout for maybe an aftermarket set of decals or I can find one on eBay that are separate that are in good condition for this kit so I can build it. Or I might do a fantasy livery of some sort just to do a throwback to the, um, to the late 80s here, mid 80s when they were racing these and do something that would be current back and then for a livery that would just be something this car actually didn't have. Uh, but this is another one here that has cool, this one actually, the body is full so the front does not come off as the Whistler one did. Um, but a lot of these kits, they're the same, I'm seeing just a little bit of differences here and there, um, obviously with the decals as well, but this kit's pretty cool. I picked up this one here, this Motocraft Mustang GTO, um, in the Scale Rods and Mods Facebook group um, from a live auction from uh, Randy over there, at Randy Gaddy. Uh, definitely a great guy to deal with, very fair on his prices. Um, I love the live auctions because you can get kits for a great deal. Um, and also, you know, it's fun just to bid against people sometimes. eBay it takes you seven, you know, seven days or buy it now and you just bought it and that's it. I kind of enjoy the, the bidding war. Obviously staying well within the price of what the kit's actually worth for a builder like myself, not to collect, but to build. Uh, it's cool just to see if, what kits I can grab. And they do a fair um, pricing on their shipping as well. So I got this, another kit I'll show you next from him that were um, really cool for pricing. But this actually has the hatchback that he does open um, as well, which is pretty cool. So um, definitely cool to see. It even has a little slit here on this part for the the windshield. So... I was kind of cool. When I first opened this kit up and saw it, I thought someone maybe did it, maybe it jagged through with the X Acto blade or something like that, but it actually is how it meant to be. So um, that's really cool to see this kit like that and see how accurate they actually made these be back in the day. Um, the next one I had to get was a 7 Eleven Mustang GTO here. Uh, the decals in this one are yellowed, so I'm going to see if I can do the sun, um, the sun technique where I put up against uh, glass for the day outside in the sun and see if the sun can um, de-yellow the decals and then I'll probably do some decal bonder from testers or a few clear coats over the decals to see if that helps them um, stay sane while I try to put them on this kit when I build it in the future. Um, but this kit is another uh, Mustang GTO. Definitely love the decals, the Sitco, the 7-Eleven old, um, old design and stuff they had back in the day. The livery is just nice with the gold wheels and stuff. So see if I can if I find some aftermarket ones here that actually give the actual hole openings as expected. But overall, this kit being built for 87 
is cool, um, even with the Camel GT on it. So you don't see a lot of smoking tobacco or beers on kits these days due to licensing and a lot of other reasons why. But it's still cool to see these kind of things back in the day have. I think I'm only missing one of these kits of the collection, and that is the the Folgers one. So I'm looking out for the Folgers one and then completing this with getting the uh, the decals that I need for the other kit. And then I should have a complete uh, builder kit for all these. This is another Daytona winner that I got. Daytona 24 hour winner of 1988 and 1 24th scale I got from Larry here in Colorado. Um, <clears throat> definitely another car that I had to get just for the Emzo. It was really cool with the casual decals and it being Jaguar and it being relatively close to the same type of body style with the covers of the back of the wheels like that Nissan I showed a little bit earlier today. So this was really cool to get one of these. And overall I was just um, really stoked because it's always cool to see the actual pictures of the car in action if you can. Um, definitely see if, they, if the company made any issues with delivery compared to what's actually on the car from what they actually dis display in the decal sheet itself. So. This was something really cool I was happy to get from Larry and um, to buy. Um, so definitely if you go to Scale Rods and Mods and you go to their live auctions or reach out to the guys directly that do sell, they always do direct sales as well based upon what you're looking for. Um, and search stuff, they can find stuff as well. So um, definitely reach out to that group if you're not a part of it and definitely um, get you some kits over there. Definitely a cool place to be a part of. Last but not least, the final kit that I have, I got from this the scale model car guy, Sean, over there on his YouTube channel is this Chrysler Corporation turbine car. I believe it was a month ago we finished off a trade and he showed his part of that 70.5 Corvette that I did a kit review on in my channel. And I actually traded that to him because he liked it and it reminded him, I believe it was his mother and, and his um, his child days. So definitely go over there and watch that video that he got and, watch, and definitely subscribe to his channel as well. Um, but I was super stoked. It's my first Johan kit that I have. Um, I remember watching this on Paul Turley's uh, YouTube channel. Unfortunately, Paul Turley does not. Um, he hasn't done YouTube in two years for, for video, but he did this, build this uh, kit on there. And I enjoyed watching it. And it was just something different, being a turbine car. So I had to just get this one. And I believe this is the uh, like a 1988 um, version. Maybe it's the actual original. I'm not sure. But it does have an exclusive frame pack and the one thing I did see from the 80s and the actual original um, releases were the frame pack wasn't the same how it was packaged inside so luckily with uh, BG over at BG's Mall Workshop he had um, one of these I believe or he had a kit similar to it that had the correct packaging as all the boxes the original boxes had packaged I was able to see that so in an upcoming kit review I'm actually going to open the cellophane, open this kit up. Yeah, I know some of you might be screaming or hollering of opening a kit this uh, this age, not knowing if it's an 80s uh, re-release or if it's an actual original re-release. But I want to open it and see what's inside and just take a peek and show what's all in here. Um, so if anyone does know, based upon what I'm showing here, if this is potentially a re-release in the 80s or early 90s, or if this actually is an original by any way, Please let me know because I would like to know if this is an original or if this by chance is a re-release as I'm not familiar and anyone who has experience in these would be cool to have. So so thank you all for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Um, if you haven't uh, commented on this video, please comment and let me know what you think of my haul. Anything you got in a haul recently would be cool to understand and see what you got. Um, please like this video and please subscribe if you can to help this channel out and help it grow and get in front of more faces. Um, I enjoy doing kit reviews, uh, the stash updates, build videos. Um, you know, definitely want to do stuff that other people aren't doing as well. So it's always nice to see new subscribers and get more information. I appreciate it. Have a great uh, week, everyone.